It pleases me to record the progress we are making day by day as we labor to establish our new mission. Alta California is truly a land blessed by the saints. Our flocks have increased on the abundant grass of the fertile valleys. Our vines have prospered. They now hang heavy with grapes. The squash and beans have also flourished and will soon be ready to harvest. The orchards we planted are now bearing fruit. Our fig crop is especially plentiful. I observe that the pickers enjoy their task. We are gradually winning the confidence of the natives, and day after day, new converts enter the mission. We bless them as men with souls, and hope to give them a better life by teaching them the useful arts of civilization. We have labored many months training these neophytes to carry out the many tasks of the mission. They have become very skillful in making the adobe bricks needed for our buildings. We are thankful that the adobe soil of our mission land is suitable for brick making. The Indians gather dry horse manure from our corral. We have taught the Indians how to make many useful wooden tools. The metal tools we brought with us are not sufficient to carry on the work. Our Indian boys enjoy tramping about in the adobe pit to thoroughly mix the heavy, sticky mud until it is just right for molding. Our carpenters have made wooden hand barrows to carry the heavy mud from the mixing pit to the molder. The bricks are molded one by one in a wooden form. Juan is our most skillful molder. He forces the adobe into all the corners of the mold and then smooths it carefully. He knows just how to handle the mold to loosen it from the newly formed brick. He washes his mold frequently. He knows that a clean mold pulls more easily and leaves straight edges.
Spawn takes great pride in the rows of well-formed bricks. His helpers respect him for his ability as a molder. The hot California sun dries the bricks quickly. They are ready to be turned on edge in about three days. The Indians break off the rough bottom edges as they turn the bricks to finish drying. The neophytes enjoy placing the bricks in the zigzag pattern that keeps them from falling over. In this warm, balmy climate, the bricks dry thoroughly in six to ten days. We are stacking them close to the walls of our new mission building. Our bricks are nine inches wide, 18 inches long, and four inches thick. Each brick weighs about 30 pounds. Juan is as skillful at laying bricks as he is at molding them. One by one, the heavy bricks are lifted to the growing wall and laid on a bed of sticky mud. Juan uses his hand-forged trowel to spread the adobe mortar on each layer of bricks and to fill the joints between them. Juan has followed our instructions in forming special bricks to lay on the angled corners of our door and window openings. We rejoice as we see the walls of our mission growing day by day. Our tallow supply from the slaughtered sheep and cattle has been sufficient to keep us well provided with candles. Jesus, our candle maker, has learned his task well. He spends many hours turning the candle wheel as he pours the rendered tallow over the candle wicks. The brass kettle and copper candle pourer that we brought from Mexico have been very useful. With these tools, Jesus has kept us well supplied with candles. We made our candle wheel of split willow branches and bound it together with narrow rawhide thongs. We have many uses for rawhide and have taught the neophytes how to prepare it from our abundant supply of cattle hides. They soak the hide in lime water to soften it and to loosen the hair. In five to seven days, the hair slips easily from the hide. The soaked hide becomes very heavy. Two neophytes are needed to lift it from the pit and wash it in clear water to remove the lime. They labor patiently at the task of beaming the softened hide. A sturdy log holds the hide in place as they scrape off the hair and flesh with the beaming knife.
We need a good supply of rawhide strips to bind our roof timbers and to make and repair our furniture and tools. the stone mono back and forth on the metate as she ground the corn into a soft dough. The iron tortilla plate was heated in preparation for baking the tortillas. Maria's helper added bits of charcoal to the fire and fanned them into life with a fan woven especially for this purpose. I observed that she is also learning to use the metate and mono, although they are not as familiar to her as the native mortar and pestle for grinding. Maria's hands moved so rapidly it was difficult to see just how she turned the dough and patted it into a thin, smooth cake, ready to be baked on the hot iron tortilla plate. The Indian woman watched her teacher closely. I think she feels she will never be able to equal Maria's swift, skillful handling of the soft dough. Tortillas are a favorite food and are served at every meal. Maria and her helpers work hard every day to prepare them. The thin cakes bake quickly and the busy tortilla makers soon had enough ready for our evening meal. The Angelus again calls us all to prayer. And so each day ends as it began with the ringing of our mission bell. him. Sir, give me this water, but I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that sense thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me. The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh their lives to help develop this brand new world of wings. Curtis who first took off from water and whose early...